What's up everyone, it's Peloton. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be covering the week four 2022 progress report. We got a lot of snow this past week in Chicago and I gotta say it made for some pretty fun fat bike rides. I think you're gonna enjoy the footage a little bit later on in this video. Um, as usual, you know the drill, we're gonna cover some metrics from the past week and we'll dive into a few of the rides in a little bit greater detail. If you guys have any cycling related questions, training, nutrition, bikes, what have you, feel free to drop those notes in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for stopping by. As usual, the best way to support the stream is to hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me over on twitch.tv slash Peloton where I live stream my IRL rides four times a week, either indoors or out on the roads themselves. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. See you on the next ride. So here it is week four of 2022, total stress load of 442, 94 miles in the saddle and seven and a half hours of ride time. Pretty solid week. Not as big as the week prior, but again, still a good week overall. Five total rides starting on Monday the 24th and ending on Sunday the 30th. Weight-wise, we started off at 197.7 pounds and managed to get down to 192. Really good work this week. Weight's going in the right direction heading into the spring road season. So for rides, we had a ride on Monday, 10 miles, 59 stress load, a little over an hour. That was a Zwift ride, if I'm not mistaken. On Wednesday the 26th, we did an RGT group ride using a magic road that was created by one of my viewers, Juan Drogo. Shout out to Juan, thanks for the route. This was a pretty intense climb over a total of 22 miles. This is a real road in Colombia that we rode here. So total stress load of 95 over 22 miles, which took me just about an hour and a half. On Friday, we had a breakthrough workout, or I should say a workout where we set some new season best powers. 264 watts for 20 minutes and 795 watts for five seconds. This was another RGT ride, 20 miles, 95 stress load for an hour and 20 minutes. And then on Saturday, did another ride. This was a 20 mile, two and a half hour fat bike ride. Really great ride, lots of snow, pretty cold outside. Be sure to check out the clips from that ride later on in the video. And lastly, on Sunday, kind of took it a little bit easier. A 60 minute swift exert combination ride, total stress load of 64 for 20 miles and a little over one hour in the saddle. Now here's a few other charts I find interesting on the Intervals ICU app. You've got two years of comparison here, 2021 versus 2022. This first chart is the power versus heart rate chart. And what you're seeing here is that my heart rate at a given power threshold is lower in 2022 than it has been in 2021. Now that's a really good sign considering I'm not even into the spring road season and already it looks like my fitness is much better than it was over the course of last year. Heart rates are lower for the same power threshold year to year. That's a good sign and indication of better fitness relative to last year. Let's take a look at this one, which is fitness over time. So this is really by day of the year. The green line is 2022 and the yellow line is 2021. So by the 43rd, 45th day in the year, here's where I'm at in 2022 in terms of fitness and here's where I was in 2021. And you can see this kind of axis where I crossed over to a higher fitness level took place right around January 25th, which was during this past week. So I'm on a nice trajectory in 2022, whereas the prior year I was actually kind of going down this past week and starting to decline all the way until really like April 1st is when I started increasing my fitness for the remainder of the season. So my trajectory is much nicer here in 2022. We wanna keep this going. We wanna get back to 80 much sooner in the season and kind of exceed that and hit some higher power outputs this year relative to the previous year. Just some other charts that 
highlight kind of the same data, but in a little bit different format. This is cumulative training load. What this is telling you is that my total stress load is higher right now than it was at the same point last year. Same thing for moving time. Um, so a couple other really good charts in the Intervals ICU app that I find interesting and thought would be worth sharing. That's it as far as data goes. Again, if you have any questions on what these charts mean or how to interpret anything in the Intervals ICU app, drop a comment in the notes below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Egan Bernal, Tour de France winner from three years ago, broke his femur in a crash today. Sad. Broke his femur and a bunch of other, bunch of other things too. I hate to say it, but I think it is too. Broken femur, you don't really come back from. That's what Chris Froome had. Chris Froome had a broken femur, wasn't the same. Um, it's such, I mean, it's, it is the biggest bone in your leg. I mean, that bone contributes to so much. Why am I not getting a walk signal here? So much power generation, you know? I have a hard time believing he's going to be any part of himself again. Yeah, the bus looks like he got destroyed, too. Like, he had to hit that thing hard. I think next time if I do some bike maintenance, I'll put the camera on a stand. You get a better angle and see what I'm doing. It's kind of hard on the chest, like when the camera's on the chest and I'm moving around. I'll have to watch the VOD, but I would imagine having the camera stationary would be better. I think he was. I think he was going downhill and that bus probably stopped and he probably couldn't react in time or got forced into the bus somehow. This is, I'm more like floating over the snow here. This feels awesome. This would be a lot harder on, uh, this would be a lot harder if I weren't in clipless pedals. We're just cruising up here right now in the deep snow. I dig it. Oh, and we're down. <laughs> couldn't, de couldn't unclip in time. Somebody clip it. Yeah, we're good. Just fell into snow. It's no problem. That is going to be the rub, though with the clip-ins. That's going to be far more likely to happen. Uh, how many years? Snow Angels! I've been streaming four years. I started streaming as Revo in 2017. This could be hard to get out of here. I probably should have brought my winter boots, to be honest. This is like this is going to be hard to restart and clip in, I think. We'll see. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I don't want to clip in. Uh. Okay. But... Yeah, I think we're walking. I think we're walking and we're probably staying on the main trail. Yeah, I've been rocking the live view for the last, I don't know, probably about a month. I gotta turn on logging on the Bella box. See what happens when it drops signal. It's weird because my modems are all on, they're connected. My bitrate just then drops to zero completely. 
I think it's one of two things. It's either I think it's either the capture card of the HDMI in the camera or something to do with the battery pack. Like maybe the battery is not consistent. Here's the ideal situation. If you live somewhere where it's warm, if you're close enough to the mountains to where you can drive, you know, two hours away to get into the mountains for snow. That to me is ideal. And California has that type of weather. You can go to Big Bear Mountain. My shirt's kind of see-through. This might not be a good riding shirt because of the green screen effect here all the track stand fail nice i'm gonna change my uh jersey real quick not in front of the camera but for the record is the ride now active what's going on here it's not active like why tell me why please i want to join this ride why can't i join the ride The last climb is what you do every weekend. Nice. Okay. Well, it looks like kind of a beast of a climb, honestly. Group ride starts in 44 seconds. Let's change the view to third person is fine. Sensors, make sure all the sensors are working. Heart rate, cadence, power. Okay, I think we're good. All right, we're gonna get started here. 27 seconds. I'm doing all right, man, I'm doing all right. I had a bit of a scare last night. Our furnace stopped working around 10.30 p.m. And it's been below freezing. I spent a couple hours troubleshooting the furnace last night. <laughs> Couldn't get it working, needed a new part. Had to go to the store today, get a part and re repair the furnace this morning. It got down as cold as 59 degrees Fahrenheit in my house last night. All right, we got a bit of a climb now. Here, these guys are doing four, 4.2 watts per kg. I'm able to sit in here much lower while I'm drafting here, which is good. I just gotta stay in the draft for a while. I mean, this guy's doing 4.8 watts per kg. These guys are all at three and a half, four. Forget about it. That's too hard for me. Me and Miles got our own little group here. I put it on intermediate. Same bots as last time. I think I just got a better start. So I'm further in front. I think it's like two and a half to 3.2 watts per kg average is what intermediate means. Oh yeah, for sure. I think they could really improve the AI. He could probably better fine tune it. Sprinters, non-sprinters, my my smart trainer just dropped out you see that that was a bunch of bs yeah i'm wondering how good the mapping software is on roads in columbia 
you probably get a better route off your head unit <laughs> using the barometric feature, barometric altitude or whatever. It actually looks, the file looks pretty clean. It looked better than some of the group ride routes that I use. My guess is that ride with GPS probably doesn't have good elevation data in that part of the world. Or maybe there's not enough data points in the route to accurately calculate the slopes. All right, we got some more water. Quite honestly, I don't think I would, I'd be hurting by the end if I didn't get water. Oh no, Sheila just passed me. No! All right, let's go. Probably got another 25 minutes or so. Maybe more, who knows. Definitely feel like I can throw up. Uh. Uh. All right, we beat Shulia. I'm glad I caught her at the end. Thank goodness. That was tough, man. Oh man, I could not, I could not push past two and a half watts per kg on those sustained climbs. It wasn't until the end that I could really push with the finish line in sight. That was tough. What is going on, Dimitri? Got that 1080p Pelo Tom. I'm trying something different tonight. I picked 40 bots, but I set their power thresholds to be a lot closer to mine. No transcoding again. That's that's a whammy right there. That's unfortunate. Well, hopefully whoever watches tonight's on Wi-Fi and has got good service. This is a pre-built route in RGT cycling called Lewin City. It's a, it's a city in Flanders or it's like a virtual city in Flanders in Belgium. So I think the graphics will be good. It won't be like a very generic route with just grass and trees and stuff. I think there'll be a lot of buildings and a lot of fans on the side of the road with flags and all that stuff. So it should be good. People have been wondering, what do you like about RGT versus Zwift? And I think the biggest thing I like about RGT right now is the ability to add bots to your ride. That to me is the coolest feature. It's great for really tuning a race simulation specific to your individual power needs or power ranges, I should say. Second great feature about RGT cycling is the ability to load your own GPX files into the software platform and have it generate what's called a magic road. And so you can ride your club ride routes whenever you want virtually. All you gotta do is email that GPX file into the RGT cycling email address and then they generate the road for you. It's really quite cool. So if you wanna race with your club mates or what have you, you can easily do that.
I feel like something's wrong. My trainer's not working or something. Like, it's not putting enough resistance back to me. And that doesn't seem right. Yeah, it seems like it's almost kind of freewheeled in erg motors. Like, something is definitely not right here. Something's still not right. Like, I'm spinning out my largest gear right now. What the heck's going on? I can't spin any faster. <laughs> I just had a drop out again. Power meter just dropped out. What the hell's going on here? That's terrible. <laughs> What the heck? These guys are blowing by me, man. Doing five watts per kg. What the? And my trainer's dropping out. Never a good sign. That's awesome. Come on, man. Seriously? What is the deal? What is the deal? Like, this is just not right. My game just crashed. Oh, no. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, come on, man. I had four kilometers to go. Seriously? Seriously? RGT cycling. What'd you, what'd you do? What is this saying right now? <laughs> Application has requested the runtime to terminate it in an un unusual way. Please contact the app support team for more info. My cameras like aren't working and stuff. This is like so bizarre. Yes, I would like to resume the ride. Is it gonna let me? Well, this could be a silver lining. Hey, hey, we're back. We're back, chat. That's better than nothing. My heart rate's back. All my metrics are back. All right, that's worth something. I'll give it bonus points for that. I'm deducting points for the crash, but I'm giving some points back for the resume feature. I was really pulling hard on the handlebars there. As hard as I could. Thanks, Dimitri, appreciate it, man. Legs are coming around. I'd say the biggest thing I noticed there was uh, I never really had a high heart rate that entire ride. My heart rate until the very end was like 150s, 160s. Maybe touched the 170 a few times, but was never approaching 180, which is my threshold heart rate. So I feel like my lungs are getting there. The legs need to catch up. Heart rate's all relative to your own physique. I'm a bigger guy. I'm a 6'3", 
six foot three inches, about 193 pounds right now. So I do have a higher heart rate. But it's interesting, somebody like Brian Kellison, he's 6'5". And he's able to race pretty hard and his heart rate's like 140s and I'd be in the 170s. So it's, it depends a lot on your physiology. My max heart rate, I've, I've touched 200 before in recent years too. Yeah, good, a good way to measure your lactate threshold is to find a road where you could ride 20 minutes, basically as hard as you could go for 20 minutes and measure your heart rate at the very end. Or make sure you can at least get the heart rate data for the ride. And that'll be a good indicator of what your lactate threshold is. Your lactate threshold is the heart rate at which your body changes from being able to remove lactate acid from the bloodstream until where the generation of lactate lactic acid is too high and your body can't keep up and clear it fast enough. So it starts to build up in your muscles and that's when you get tired. That's the whole reason you get tired is lactic acid and your lactate heart rate Lactate threshold heart rate is the heart rate at which your blood can't clear the acid faster than it's being produced. Yeah, this is good. The trails are nice and packed down. I'm regretting not wearing glasses though. That was a mistake. Oh, slid out there. Oh. didn't think to wear my glasses. That was dumb. I'm going to catch some branches to the face and it's not going to feel good. I'll tell you that much. I missed it. Was there a deer back there? Something. Oh my god. I'm getting wrecked here. Jesus. <laughs> I just hit some log under the snow and almost took me out. Yeah, I think the problem is the snow is like really just powdery. So though it's packed down, it's not like adhered to the snow underneath. And it's slippery. Very slippery. I feel like every time you talk to somebody about, yeah, I'm riding clipless pedals if they're not a cyclist, you then have to follow it up by, yeah, the, I'm, I'm wearing clipless pedals. Yeah, the, ty the type you have to clip into. Like, what the hell? It don't make no dang sense. Well, then Art is focusing on his upcoming road season, so he's training for that. And I think Vanderpool's trying to heal from a back injury. So Tom Pidcock is another good cross racer who rides for Ineos on the road. He is gonna be there. I think Vanderpool might've gone But I think with the COVID stuff, some people are just saying, forget it. Well, road cycling is where the money's at, that's for sure. You see these branches, Chet? Take a look at this branch. You see the thorns on this thing? This is called thorn brush, thorn bush, whatever it's called. You don't want to be hitting that. That does not feel good. And I don't have... Well, that's all relative, right? 
Not a lot of money. Not a lot of money, but if you're going to make, if you want to get the highest contract, you're going to be on a road cycling. I don't think mountain bikers make hardly anything compared to road cyclists. I know, man. Check me out. What's up, gang? How's it going? Morning. Guy coming towards. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Fat gang, baby. Fat gang. Snow is a little slippery today. Have a good ride. It's okay, this guy's kind of just chilling out. So here's what's happening, I guarantee you. That guy doesn't have studs in the tires, and he's all over the place today. That's what's happening with him. He's laying down in the snow, looking like he's going to take a nap. You can kind of see where on the trails here, where it looks like people are sliding out and stuff. Somebody fell down right there. You can see body prints in the side snow. All right, right there, somebody fell. Guarantee you, somebody doesn't have studs in the tire and probably has got the wrong tire pressure. Right there, fell in the snow. It's definitely that guy too, that's the funny part, because all his buddies are like, there's a guy back there. And now it makes sense. Probably like five PSI or lower is where you want to be. What's up, gear? Uh, no, I don't usually have a problem dressing. I feel good right now. When you're in the woods, it's not bad. I've got these, these are like 10 year old Mavic gloves. I have like a 10 year old Mavic jacket too. And I just wear like a long sleeve base layer underneath. And I'm good. When I'm in the woods, I'm fine. It's cold on the road though. That's the tricky part is, so you got to ride on the road to get where you're going, then it, then it becomes a problem because it gets cold on the road. Yeah, Mavic makes great wheels. They're kind of, uh, I don't know what the deal is with them right now. I think they got sold. Mavic got sold. They stopped distributing in the U.S. I think they got bought by some company that's now trying to make their way back into the U.S. with Mavic. It's a French brand. But I don't know if you could actually buy a retail Mavic wheel, a new one, in the U.S. these days. Hey, R Peak. How you doing? Long time no see. How you been? Yeah, gear, right now I'm just wearing like winter winter snow shoveling boots. That's what I wear when it gets cold. Some people buy like bike specific winter boots. They're usually really expensive. They're probably a little bit warmer and probably a little bit lighter. But these work just fine for me. Maybe down the road I'll get some different boots made specifically for winter fat biking. Yeah, I looked at them. I would need to get a new crank though. None of them supported the Samox crank. 
but I might consider doing here. Just buy a good SRAM or something crank. Get that power spider. So on Exert, I got my fitness up to two and a half stars now. I want to get to three full stars before I start the road season in March. Got a month to go. I'm not sure exactly what the stars represent. I think it's like a general categorization of how strong you are as a rider. I want to say towards the end of the road season in August, September, I was at three stars. Definitely want to get back there. Fitness level is good. Problem right now is my fatigue is still fairly high. As long as I keep working out, it should be fine. And don't overdo it. All right, legs are starting to warm up now. It's a little hot down here. What's the maximum wattage I could do? Right now, it says I could do 1,112 watts, but I'm a little skeptical of that. I don't know if I could actually go that high. Probably in the 800s is my guess. Maybe the 900s. <laughs> All right, here we go. Another 351 watts for 30. Ah. Ah. Rocco, what is up, dude? How you doing, man? Welcome back to the ride. You got a mountain bike, would you still like to get out in the winter? Yeah, I've been really happy with the mukluk. Very affordable. And just, it's just fun to get out and ride, you know? Give it up for Rocco in chat, my cousin. He's a big spin class guy. He's been crushing the gyms here in Chicago. Straight up owning all the soccer moms in the spin classes. I wasn't able to ride today with stuff I had to do around the house and the kids and, and I spent a bunch of time recording my fat bike YouTube video. Do I think studded tires are needed? Well, it really depends. If you want to go in the deep snow where it gets icy, I would definitely recommend studs. If you're going to mostly ride on dirt trails, then probably not. I'm actually a little bit torn here. Because when the weather starts to turn bad, but it hasn't snowed yet, I actually would prefer to just have the rubber tire. However, I installed all the studs on mine, so you know it's a little bit harder to roll when you got the studs in the tire on on the dirt and on the on the roads themselves. You know, you could you might want to look at getting studdable tires and then consider putting the metal studs on the outer tread pattern and leave the middle tread rubber. That way you can roll better on the on the asphalt and the dirt. It'll be snow mostly, live in Michigan, okay. Yeah, uh, it's not too hard, it's just painstaking. There's a lot of 
there's a lot of them. So if you want to do every single hole, you know, it took me probably two, three hours to do both tires. I think I counted, there was like 140 studs per tire. Something like that. Took a while. You need to make sure you have alcohol too. You can't insert a stud into a dry rubber tire very easily. So make sure you got some alcohol. You need to buy a tool, this little stud insertion tool. You dip the, you pick up the stud with the tool, you dip it in alcohol, you push it into the tire. You know, your other option is to buy two sets of tires and swap them as well, which might be better. It really depends. You're going to spend about the same amount of money, maybe a little bit less with buying studs. Fat bike tires are not cheap. They're probably at least 120, 150 bucks a tire. Whereas the studs you can buy full set of studs for two tires for about 150 bucks. That's how many come in the, in the muck luck, I'm pretty sure. And the tires that I have on there are 45 North Dillinger 5 tires. So far I'm not running tubeless, although my wheels, rims, and tires are tubeless compatible. Um, but the bike came installed with tubes and I didn't feel inclined to wait for the shop to switch them out when I was there. So I might do that in the future. Quite honestly, you got to install different rim tape. You got to get the sealant. Here we go. Next interval, 560 watts for 20 seconds. Let's go. Hard to think of a time when I'm going to be doing 560 watts seated. Yeah, I'm like at this weird fitness level right now. Between, oh, I just botched this big time. I botched this. For some reason, I didn't hear the bell go off. So I wasn't spinning my legs. Oh God, I'm stuck. Oh, it hurts. I can't even move my legs right now. Oh, you hate to see it. Man explodes his hamstrings after not paying attention. It's funny, so I'm recording these YouTube videos, right? And it's weird trying to script out what you're gonna say while you're recording. Like I find myself fumbling through a lot of the words and repeating things like the word so, or saying um, or let's take a look at this, or just these filler phrases. When you go back through and you're editing a YouTube video, <laughs> You find them all throughout the footage. It really makes you think about what you're saying. That'll be a interesting iterative process for me where I try to get better at speaking on camera, especially when I'm recording it and I'm trying to have a little bit higher quality than the Twitch streams per se. <laughs> One of the things I noticed is I have a very, sometimes I have a very awkward like cadence of words. I'll be thinking about a word or what I'm gonna say next. And I almost like stutter in my mind and the word doesn't come out in the right pattern. So I have to cut the video footage a lot to make it a little bit smoother. Blue house.